Hey garden friends, welcome to Flower Patch and the Greenhouse. And it's snowing outside, but I am warm enough. It's not, you can see my breath. It's not warm in here, but it's warm enough. I have my little dish heater to keep me toasty. And I wanted to do a little sweet pea sewing. Now, a lot of people will say you need to have um, like the root trainers or those longer things to seed them in. You know, I never had them. I have grown sweet peas for hmm, 40 years, and I never knew that they liked those uh, root trainers, but I have been perfectly successful in pots. Now, these are some of the taller pots, um, but I have sewn them in the smaller four-inch pots uh, and done just fine. They, I have not seen any noticeable difference. And so when people say you need to have the root trainers, um, ignore them. They, for some reason, think that they work better. Maybe in their experience they have for them, but for me, not at all. So I just fill up these pots and I will, I'm, I don't grow for cutting, I grow for scent. And to have something in my garden that is just a delight, um, climbing up, a trellis with a rose or some other climber or on an obelisk um, all by itself. I got ice chunks in my potting soil. It's been so cold. It's been getting down into like to 20 degrees at night, so everything's quite frozen in here. But the sweet peas won't mind. Now, I do not soak my seeds. I do not nick my seeds. They do just fine just putting into moist soil. I used to do all those things and um, I did not see a noticeable difference. So to me, it's not worth the extra effort. Why go put in extra work when it really isn't necessary and you don't benefit that much from it? Um, and that's just my personal experience. Like I said, I've been doing this for 40 years. I think by now I would be able to tell the difference, right? Okay, so this one is Select Seeds from Select Seeds, Antique Flowers. I love their vintage flowers. Um, this one is Sweet Pea Prince Edward of York. So, says, amazing honey and orange blossom scent has endeared sweet peas to generations of gardeners. So early as spring into humus-rich alkaline soils. Um, I have some I planted out a couple weeks ago before all the snow came. And it should be interesting to see if they go ahead and grow. Um, I've had grow, uh, some winters have them over winter, uh, reseed themselves because I let them go to seed on the vine. Um, and so you never know, depends on the year. Okay, it says, sowing outdoors, sow three to four weeks before last spring frost. For me, that would be the first of May. And I could do that to see how well it turns out because I do notice that the ones that I've direct sown um, have been just hardier um, and they catch up in growth with the ones that I put out. So um, sometimes I'm just, I love getting an early start. So, all right, sowing pots four to six weeks before planting out. So I'm perfect timing here. Planting depth, half an inch to one inch and uh, five to 30 days they sprout. They won't sprout that early in here because it's so cold. Um, and I was not going to bother putting them in on the light rack. I could just to see, but to me it's not worth it. Now I do three or four seeds per pot because as I said, I just want them to grow. If I was growing for cutting, and usually the vintage ones um, aren't great for cutting because they don't have the long stems that uh, flower farmers go for. These are primarily grown for the scent. The Spencers are the ones that are grown for cutting. And um, they usually have larger flowers and um, longer stems for the cutting market. Whereas these, uh, and I'm pretty sure this is one of the heirloom types, uh, are really grown for their scent, for me, anyways. Okay, so I did, I put three in each pot and then I will press them down into the soil and then I will just kind of brush the soil over them. I want good contact with the soil and then I just scoop it over top and firm that down on top and all is good. Now you really do want to pay attention to firming it down 
because the contact with the seed is really important to good germination. Um, I know a lot of people go on and on about fluffy seed starting mix and what have you. I've never uh, bothered, I shouldn't say never, I have tested it and I was given some last year and I used it. Um, I saw no benefit over using a good potting soil. Um, and seed starting mix is much more expensive compared to potting soil. So um, go ahead and use potting soil. Alrighty, they're all firmed in. This soil is really moist, this potting soil. So I will come and check uh, in a few days and see if it needs to be moistened anymore. When I water, I will water from the bottom many times, though these are pretty deep, so I may water from the top, but very gently, and I'm really, really careful not to keep it too soaked, because the seeds will rot if you have the soil too wet. Um, and especially as they'll be sitting in the cold um, out here, if I had them on my light rack, um, it would be warm enough. I think they would germinate pretty quick, uh, but I'm not going to do that. I don't need to because I can't put them out into my garden for a couple months. So they'll be fine in here. They'll get going. And then we can plant them out. And I have a whole slew of sweet peas seeds to start. And I'll, whenever I get the chance to come out here, that's when I'll do it. So right now I'm going to put these in my seed starting record for from my um, garden journal, sweet peas, and then I'll put um, Prince of York, wasn't that it? At Prince Edward. Okay, Prince Edward of York. And 223, and I will go ahead and put these over here. I have some trays that I set them in. If I want to bottom water, I just pour water into the trays. So here we are a few weeks later, and I say a few weeks because I had grown these sweet peas out here in the greenhouse. I started them in here because when you grow them in a colder environment, they're tougher and they're stockier and they produce better during uh, the summer, spring and summer. For me, it's summer because we get later start. Um, and I, that's what I want. It, rather than starting them indoors, I didn't need to start them in the house under the lights. So just keep that in mind when you're starting sweet peas. A lot of times I will start mine from seed directly out in the garden. That works very, very well. Um, but now you see how tall these have gotten. They're about hmm, six inches tall. So I wanted to give them a little nip so that they'll grow even stockier. So I'm gonna go down, there's like one, and this, the shoot's going up, two, three, four, four sets of leaves. I'm gonna go down to the second set of leaves. Now these, you can actually put the, pop these into soil and they will root. So I can do that. Let me get a little pot that I can put these in to get them started. Um, I wasn't anticipating doing this, but while I'm here, I might as well show you how I do it. You don't have to add any um, you can if you want to. You don't have to add any hormone, etc., to it, and it just will work fine. So I'm going to nip off the two these lower, this lower leaf, and I'll put it down in there. Set it. I'm going to do several because I'm cutting back several. Another one. Can you see me over here? Yeah. Nipping it down. I want this leaf node, because a lot of times that's where the new roots come, to be under the soil line. So I'll make sure that is done. This one's short, this one is getting taller. Yeah, should I take it down for, no, I'm just gonna take it down to there. And if you want to, you can cut the end a little bit further so that you know it's gonna be under the soil line. And I have um, sweet peas coming up out in my garden. Uh, they're volunteers from last year where I had a bunch of sweet peas. So I know I can put these out and I'll find where I want to put them. I'm going to put them, I'm going to protect them a little bit because they've been in the greenhouse, which has more diffused sunlight than directly out in the garden. And I could have waited for these to be a little bit bigger if I wanted to, 
but I thought this was a good point uh, at which to um, nip these back. Cut them back and they will become stockier. They'll send out side shoots and be a little bit stockier, etc. Now, you wouldn't necessarily want to put that many in a pot because when they root, dividing them out is kind of tricky. Um, I'm just setting them there for now. So, these are all nipped back. You see how short they are now? It looks a little pathetic, but I'm gonna go find where to put these out in the garden and plant them. I will sprinkle around, and I've not shown this to you before, but I will now. Let me see if I get this bag. It's kind of a heavy bag, but this is what I use to deter pests, and it's called First Saturday Lime, and I will put it around the plant so bugs do not come out. It doesn't kill bugs. It just repels them. Um, I have found it very, very effective, and it's safe. It's safe around animals. It's safe for you. You just don't want to breathe it in, of course. But I use it in my chicken pen, in my chicken nesting boxes, you know, underneath the laying, the bedding. Um, and it deters mites and stuff for them. And it does not become caustic when it gets wet like other limes can. So that's just something you need to know. But I think I have a link for it that I can put in the description box. I will try to get back to you on that. If you don't see it there, um, I eventually I will have one because um, I, I've loved it. I, I get ants really bad. The ants that climb up your legs and bite you in the garden um, and I sprinkle it in those areas where they're at and then they're gone and I don't have to worry about them you know, biting on me anymore. So that my friends is how I start sweet peas. I'm gonna take you out and show you the volunteers or the ones that are coming up from seed out there. And I could also right now put seeds out in the garden itself. Um, the caveat with that is a lot of times the gophers like to come up and eat them. Um, I think I've gotten rid of the gophers right now in the back garden, but they will be back. Um, there's just gophers everywhere. They're just so overpopulated right now that they are a pest for many, many people and causing a lot, a lot of damage. So I'll take you out there, we'll show you that. Um, and I also have a video, I know I have a blog post on how I start seeds, I direct seed because they, I just get such better results with my sweet peas when I direct seed them in the soil. So if you can do that, it might be an option. Um, and I get blooms through the summer typically, and that's because we get cool nights. Um, uh, where you have warmer nights, they'll, they'll probably stop um, blooming when it gets hot. Uh, what I do, and a lot of times if we start getting warm nights, like mm, end of July, beginning of August, we'll have some warm nights. They'll pause. They're not dead. They're not done. They will revive come fall when it cools down and start blooming again. At least they have for me. So unless they're very mite ridden or mildewy or whatever, give them a chance to rebloom in the fall. You might be surprised. So, okay, let's go out and see the one that volunteered. So here's the baby sweet pea that has arrived or germinated here, and I may get many more because there was a sweet pea here and I let it drop seeds. And so it sprouted. Hey guys, I said I was going to um, show you where I plant those sweet peas and I'm not gonna be able to do that because the garden is still in such a mess right now because we're transforming things. Um, we have to move things, we have to change things because of the damage done this winter. So I'm just going to say goodbye and I will share later on in the summer when they're blooming pretty and I'll share then where I planted them. So I'll talk to you later and I'll see you in the next video.